Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the regular scheduled meeting of the Beaver Creek City Council. Before we get uh, started with the official meeting tonight, we have a very pleasurable por portion of our meeting, and you can see uh, some of Beaver Creek's finest standing up here with me tonight. And they're here because May 15th has been proclaimed as Peace Officer Memorial Day. So I have a proclamation that I would like to read and then present to the officers. Whereas the Congress of the United States has designated May 15th of each year to be Peace Officers Memorial Day and the week in which May 15th falls as National Police Week. And whereas the members of the Beaver Creek Police Department play an, an, essential, an, an essential role in safeguarding the rights and freedoms of the citizens of Beaver Creek. And whereas it is important that all citizens know and understand the duties, responsibilities, the hazards, and sacrifices of their law enforcement agency, and that members of their agency recognize their, their duty to serve the people by safeguarding life and property, by protecting them against violence and disorder, protecting the innocent against deception, and the weak against oppression. And whereas the Beaver Creek Police Department has grown to be a modern and nationally accredited law enforcement agency, and that the men and women of the Beaver Creek Police Department unceasingly provide a vital public service. Now therefore, I, Bob Stone, Mayor of the City of Beaver Creek, Ohio, along with the entire City Council, do hereby proclaim the week of May 9 through 15, 2021, is National Police Week. Chief, I'd like to present this to you on behalf of your entire staff. We appreciate everything you all do. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Please. Mayor. Thank you very much, sir. And uh, it is my privilege uh, to be the chief of this agency. Uh, I've been here going on 31 years now. And uh, it's these gentlemen right here uh, just a very small sample of who we have out there this evening and who is out here on a daily basis. They are the ones out there putting their lives on the line each and every day, protecting and serving this community. And I just thank them for that. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you very much. <laughs> gentlemen, any, any comments? Please. <laughs> um, I'll just say I'm that. i put you on the spot, what I did. We, we certainly <laughs> appreciate the recognition, but I think I can speak for all of us that, and say that it's an honor be in this profession and work for this community and this city uh, to be part of something bigger than ourselves and we appreciate that opportunity and we we certainly appreciate it and I and and the feedback in the, in, the, in our lives from the community is that the, the community appreciates it as well so thank you to those that have been here for a long time and some that have been here for just a little while and uh, we look forward to to uh, just a great week okay so thank you very much thank you Thank you. Can I Thank get a you. picture of all you guys up front? Sure, sure. I'm up here. All right. Where are you going? We'll be right behind you. Sure, we're good. All right. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Jim. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Councilmember Bales. Here. Councilmember Curran. Here. Councilmember Durr. Here. Councilmember Garcia. Here. Councilmember Schwartz. Here. Vice Mayor Adams. Here. Mayor Stone. Here. At this point, I'd like to turn it over to Vice Mayor Adams for the play. Beaver Creek with a, a really professional, uh, outstanding police department. 
Another thing that's recognized this week is the uh, law enforcement officers who have given their ultimate given the ultimate sacrifice to protect and serve their communities. Uh, I looked this up. According to Officer Down Memorial Page, in 2019 there were 150 line of duty deaths. In 2020 there were 362. That's more than doubled. So far this year in 2021 there's been 119 in just four months. Uh, I would ask that you all join me in just a moment of silence to remember those who have given their all and to those who continue to serve our community every day. Thank you very much. For us this evening, uh, any changes? Move we approve the agenda, Your Honor. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the agenda as submitted. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same. Motion carries. Approval of minutes. First is the April 19th, 2021 work session. Any changes? Motion. Move we approve the April 19th, 2021 work session minutes. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the minutes from April 19th as submitted. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same. Abstention. Thank you. One abstention. Next is ordinance resolutions PUDs. Ordinance 21-08. This is the second reading of ordinance number 21-08. It's an ordinance amending the zoning map by rezoning approximately 81.66 acres of land from PUD B 398 B3 to a RPUD residential plan unit development. Located on the south side of Shakertown Road, west of North Alpha Bellbrook Road, and further described as book six, page 16, part of parcel one on the Greene County Property Tax Atlas. It's PUD 21-2. Thank you. And we left this at the last meeting that uh, staff and the applicant would get together and work out a few little things. And so do we have an update? Oh, uh, yes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, as, as you just stated, um, at that last meeting, it was tabled. There was a few outstanding issues that uh, staff and the applicant. I'm going to uh, interrupt you just one second. Certainly. It, no, this was not tabled. This, the other part was tabled. So I'm sorry. I was going to untable it, but this part we don't have to untable. That is correct. Officially, this okay. is the second reading of the yes. ordinance. Yes, yes. Okay. Um, but for my purposes here, I'm going to present both the, the ordinance fine. and the site plan, um, and then, okay. then you can untable that. But uh, as, as you stated, um, we did go back with the applicant based on some concerns that came up at the last meeting. And just a few of the things that were resubmitted. One was this uh, updated landscape plan. And you can see they added uh, some row of trees along the backs of these lots and up on the hill. It's kind of, is, there's a, a sharp grade from the end of where they're proposing to cut down to the, to the lot lines and, and, the, and great. But there, yeah, there, this is a steep, a fairly steep hill, three to one, but it, it's just a, a long drop. So they are proposing to add some additional evergreen trees along this line and along this line. And there's also a, the, the original plan didn't show, but there was a condition that they have landscaping back here and here. So these new plans show it. And, and you can see on this um, you know, rendering version that there is a good mixture of trees now on this hill and out in front to help soften the site from the perimeters. Um, also, there was some concern of what, uh, that only one tree would be on the lot. So we did have them submit a standard um, landscaping package or this, this is the, the bare minimum of what you'll see out on each individual lot. So this is a, a what we call a typical uh, household landscaping. So this is, was also included in the landscape plan. You can see a mixture of trees and shrubs around the perimeter of the front of the house. Another thing that was a con uh, of concern was the uh, trees along the 25 foot uh, area between this neighborhood and the existing neighborhoods, uh, both to the west and to the south. And it, Upon conversation with the applicant, they have agreed to uh, and volunteered actually to put a conservation easement over this 25-foot area. And what that does, it, it, 
because it's not a condition of approval of a site plan or the rezoning, but it would be a condition of the subdivision, it'll put it as a private converse, uh, con conservation easement on the document stating that no tree under three inches will be cut unless prior permission by the, the uh, homeowners association and it's a private covenant and restriction between the homeowners um, and, and the upman and the rest of the neighborhood. So it's not something that we'll enforce or, or that you know, we're in charge of enforcing, but it is something that'll be a legal, um, legal requirement that any homeowner can take another homeowner or the HOA to the courts if they, f if they feel that uh, there's been some violation of private covenants and restrictions. So again, that's proposed with this language to be on the subdivision, which should this be approved, that would be the next step for the developers to take a subdivision to the Planning Commission. Also, there was some line of uh, sight uh, concerns and we did have them provide a sketch looking back to the west as well as looking to the east and show that they do meet minimum uh, line of sight distances uh, for the Shaker Town Road as it's constructed and as they're proposing to construct the new, uh, the new roadways. Uh, I did submit this to our city engineer and he reviewed it and agreed with their assessment that they do meet ODOT requirements for line of sight from the entrance points. Uh, so again, there's a few conditions added in, in, your, in your proposed resolution uh, for your consideration, or motion, sorry, for your motion, I, I put those in red text for easier to read, but it's the updated lands landscape plan, the conservation easement. We also added uh, the condition that specifically that street lights need to be added at, um, at the intersections of Shakertown and North Alpha Belbert roads where the, the new proposed subdivision would enter the main roads and also just reinforce that they are required to uh, meet all wetland mitigation requirements by the EPA when they do mitigate that small um, wetland area around the, the uh, parcel lot, future lot number one uh, near the uh, North Alpha Bell Road entrance. But again, um, staff does recommend approval. Um, the other conditions uh, remain as proposed. Um, there was just a few additional conditions that you can see in your motion uh, in red. But again, staff and planning commission both do recommend approval of both the rezoning and the specific site plan request. Procedurally, um, just to remind council that we need to uh, prefer that you guys uh, vote on the, res the ordinance first so that this, um, sure. and then the site plan second. Sure. Just a quick Thank question. You. The conditions that you have added, they are to the site plan or to the ordinance? It's to the site, to the motion for the site plan. That's right. All right. Thank you. This, uh, this ordinance was sponsored by uh, Council Member Dewar. Uh, any discussion? Uh, I'll, I'll lead off by uh, thank, saying thank you to staff and the applicant for trying to uh, mitigate some things. I know we can't take care of everything all the time, but uh, uh, any further comments? All right. We'll get into specifics with the next one maybe. So, Councilman? Um, motion to approve Ordinance 21-08. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve Ordinance 21-08. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same. Motion carries. Now we have public hearing PUD 21-2 specific site plan. Move to untable PUD 21-2 specific site plan number one. Second. I have a motion and a second to remove PUD 21-2 specific site plan fr from the tabling. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same. Motion carries. Anything else you want to add, uh, Randy? You're good, Rick. You're, I will move right on there. Just a quick question, Randy. Uh, you said nothing under three inches would be cut. You <clears throat> meant greater than three inches, correct? It, sorry, yeah, I misspoke on that. Okay, it's, I, it, I just it, wanted to be sure. Yeah, I, correct. Randy. Randy. Randy, I have another question. Uh, first of all, I appreciate all the work you've done with the modifications in red. Uh, definitely, I can get behind the conservation buffer. Um, with regard to the landscaping plan, mm -hmm. does the tree in the front yard that you showed last week, that yeah, th those trees, they still exist plus the landscaping plan. Correct, yeah, yes, them. those are still, those will still be there. Okay, that's all I have. Anyone else? 
Are we just asking questions or making comments? Yeah, we're just both. Can I make a comment? Mm -hmm. I do want to say that um, I just wanted to recognize that we received further input from the HOA for Terra Falls. And um, unfortunately, we didn't get it until or late this evening, so around 5, I think. And so I looked over it, and I just wanted to kind of address it in a way because I was just a little disheartened, I think, um, kind of by the response. I really felt that our fellow council members really did take into consideration and really listen to the residents, and I think that was reflected by our tabling of, of the matter. So if they weren't addressed or there was something that we didn't address, I sincerely apologize for that. I know that that was never anyone's intention up here. Um, but in terms of a couple of the things that were pointed out, first, the erosion and drainage, um, I feel that we did address that and that we had the engineer come up and essentially state that, you know, any development that comes into this city has to be better off than it was. They either have to be the same or be better in terms of drainage. And so I think that's something that has been addressed. Um, in terms of the deforestation, I think that this was great. I mean, the tabling actually got us a lot more trees. They got us a further landscaping plan. We have two, three, three additional new tree lines that have been added. And so I think that that's a significant improvement. And then the last two things were the road wear and tear in the school districts. And I know we addressed that, our legal counsel addressed that and basically confirmed that those are things that we can't take into consideration um, during these types of decision making. And so I would just ask that residents recognize that we do, ref we do have to represent all residents in making these decisions and not just a certain portion or a certain development. Um, and that's unfortunate because I know that the concerns and if it were my neighborhood, I would feel the same way. But if we were to take those things into consideration, we would be subjecting ourselves to a lawsuit. And so in doing that, I'm taking into consideration the entire city. And so I just kind of want to address that and address those concerns. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Anyone else? Okay, and I'm just going to restate. Oh, sorry, Mayor. Because uh, I think Mrs. Hopem also mentioned um, the issue of speed along Shaker Town. It's something that I looked at a few times uh, this past week, just driving down it at different hours. Uh, and it was discussed the potential to have a turn lane. Uh, so I want to throw that out to council just as a point of consideration um, along Shaker Town. Um, thank you. Okay. Any thoughts on that? A turn lane I, on Shaker Town? Yes. Uh, so when coming coming down. I thought that there was going to be one in the middle. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. There is one in the middle? Okay, okay I thought so. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. That's good. Okay, thank you. Right. Anything else? And I just do want to remind, uh, and, and again, we've all stated that nothing is ever going to, when it's built next door to you, going to be huh. is the same as your, where you're at. It's just not. And uh, But I think by realizing and a lot of people do realize I believe that a commercial development going in there which can go in tomorrow uh, would deforest the whole place a commercial property going in there tomorrow would quadruple at least the traffic so there's a lot of good in this development as well and uh, is it going to be more traffic? It is going to be more traffic. Is it going to be, you know, construction and that sort of thing? It is. That's just, unfortunately, the way things are. So, uh, last chance. Any comment? Any more comments before a motion? Do I hear a motion? Your Honor, I move that uh, PUD 21-2 uh, number one sky crossing and uh, that that would uh, be un untabled. Is that it? Huh? You gotta read that. You gotta read the big one. Yeah. All right. Uh, I move for the purpose of uh, <clears throat> taking the administrative action approval of specific mm -hmm. site plan for sky crossing on the basis that city council finds the facts submitted with the application and accompanying materials and modifications, amendments, and supplementary conditions 
satisfy the standards and the criteria for specific site plan as per 158.066 of the zoning code. Supplementary conditions required of this approval shall be as follows, which there are 31. And I further move that this motion with all conditions be fully recorded in the minutes of the council meeting. I hear a second. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve PUD 21-2 with the 31 conditions. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same. Motion carries. Thank you. All right, next, ordinances, resolutions, and PUDs. First is ordinance 21-10. This is the second reading of ordinance number 21-10. It's an ordinance, ordinance to establish a new special revenue fund in conformity with federal and state laws and generally accepted accounting principles. Thank you. This uh, motion was uh, sponsored by Council Member Dewar. Any discussion? Sir? Motion to approve Ordinance 21-10. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve Ordinance 21-10. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same. Motion carries. Next is Resolution 21-18. This is Resolution number 21-18. It's a resolution to enter into a master supply agreement with Dynergy Energy Services East LLC doing business as dinner. Dynergy Energy Services LLC for all services related to supplying the electric requirements for the city's electric aggregation program. Thank you. I think we're going to have a presentation this evening by uh, Yes, Rich. this is uh, Rich from uh, Energy Alliances uh, while I get his slideshow presentation up here and running. If uh, council will remember and residents remember uh, three years ago we uh, went into a an uh, aggregation program uh, specifically for electric it was passed many years ago that we could do electric or gas but we've uh, not uh, it's not been competitive enough uh, for uh, gas but electric we had a three-year aggregation program and with that uh, uh, we're going to have rich do a summary of what we have uh, have had and then go into uh, there we go and then go into uh, actually what's being proposed for the next two years and he'll explain why we're doing two years instead of three uh, and rich if you want to take that just uh, side to side you can move the slides Great. Thank, you, Mr. Landrum. Uh, thank you mayor thank you council uh, as mr. Landrum said uh, it's been about three years uh, since we were here and started off the uh, lecture program uh, I know some of you were, were here at that time and some, some of you are new, uh, but wanted to take the chance, obviously, with the program expiring this August, to again, talk where we've been and kind of uh, where we may go. So, you know, again, talk a little bit about where we are, you know, why things may have not played out exactly as we had hoped three years ago at this time. And then uh, some of the considerations that we'll take in from the lessons learned over the last three years on, on kind of changing that program for the next. So to start, you know, the program right now expires this August. Um, it was a 36-month program with uh, AEP Energy, and you know they had they had were able to run the program great. I think we had great service with them. Uh, the price that's expiring is 5.015 cents, and uh, through March of this year, um, the average resident, and again we're you know fully transparent has paid about 2.2% more than if they would have stayed with AES Ohio, formerly known as DPNL. And you know, one of the main reasons for that, um, as you'll see, is you know, we, we try to show each month you know, what, what the average resident, what, you know, how they would have performed versus the aggregation. And then the orange line is sort of the cumulative over time. So as you, know, you can clearly see, the first 12 to 15 months, everything was just fine. Uh, you know, it was performing as expected. We knew there was going to be uh, some, you know, we'll, uh, we'll call it poor performance uh, for that second winter because of how AES's uh, winter rate structure is. But really, as we get into June of 2020 and beyond, uh, that's where things went poorly very quickly. Um, and why? Uh, it shouldn't be a surprise to a lot of people. It's uh, you know a lot of it is 
leading up to what happened with the pandemic and what happened to the commodity markets. So though we expected the winter of 19 and 20 to be lower, we did expect savings to return for June of last year through at least May of this year. But you know, what had happened, and showing uh, on this chart, uh, I show where, where the aggregation was signed. So this would be the, power, the prices of the raw power from June of 20 to May of 2021. So everything in the power world thinks in the, that calendar year of June to May. So this would really be kind of the last year of the program. So when the program was signed, as you can see, uh, you know, things were just around, right around $34 a megawatt hour. Um, again, raw price climbed up. So we, you know, we looked really good where things were. But then uh, AES Ohio, so they run auctions every year in March to procure the power uh, in what they call tranches for further years out. And they buy a little bit at a time over a three-year period to try to dollar cost average the market, to try to take care of those ups and downs of the market. But where they got lucky, <laughs> or I guess we'll say lucky, is that they locked in the last 50% of June of 20 to May of 2021 on March 9th. As you can see, is just the close to the bottom. And the, the state was pretty much shut down that same week. So it was at that point that uh, you know, there was a lot of uncertainty in the commodity markets. It was around that time that uh, crude oil went to negative $40 a barrel. Um, so again, lucky for them uh, that they were able to do that. Unlucky for us that they were able to lock in the last year um, of, their, of their price, roughly 50% of it, um, at near bottom of the market. So again, you know, first 15 months or so, when it's planned, it was really that last year, the last 12 months or so that went you know, just not as planned, but you know, there's nothing we could have seen three years ago standing here, you know, what was gonna come uh, in 2020 to kind of get us to the point on uh, DPNL, or I guess AES Ohio, being able to uh, get their standard service offer so low for the last 12 months. Mm. Mm. But what we do know, um, you know, kind of leading up now, again, yeah, so that you know, they got it to go so low. We have seen that the price of power fall since then as well, which I think we'll be able to take some opportunities to lock in lower rates kind of moving forward for the next couple of years. And again, comparing to where uh, the aggregation price was, where it's expiring, 5.015 uh, cents compared to DPNL's 4.603 cents. But that does expire this, this May. So starting in June, the prices will start to go back up. That, that is certain. DPNL, sorry, AES Ohio, uh, did uh, file, uh, file their rates with the Public Utilities Commission last week. So we do know for certain that those rates are going to go up. And on average, for the uh, average residential customer, we're seeing those rates go up by about 4%. Again, if they stayed with AES Ohio's standard service offer. So though they were about 4.6 this past 12 months, those same people would see that jump up to about 4.81 for at least the next 12 months. And that's, I think, where we're seeing uh, you know, some of the opportunity to lock in uh, with the aggregation price to come in underneath that as well. So we did, we did run an RFP um, in April, and we did have uh, multiple bidders come back. Uh, even though AEP Energy is the incumbent supplier, um, Donnegy Energy Services is, is the company that came back the cheapest. Um, feel very comfortable with Donnegy Energy Services. We do uh, a lot of business with them. Uh, actually used to work for them. Um, so again, even though we would change suppliers, uh, if you so voted on that, you know, again, feel very comfortable with that change. And what they've proposed uh, is a 4.58 cents uh, for 24 months. So that starting this August through August of 2023, um, that's about 4.8 percent lower than what DPNLs, sorry, AES Ohio's rates are starting uh, this June, and it's uh, roughly uh, eight and a half percent lower than where the current aggregation price is. So you know, re again, really happy with where that has has played out. Two years versus three years. As we saw from that chart, you know, just trying to take care of some of that potential volatility. You know, though it's nice to lock in prices for a long period of time, you know, when, when things go wrong, um, you don't have as easy a chance to get out of that when you lock in for, for a longer period of time. Um, we didn't see much difference in price between a 24 and 36 month, but we still feel, uh, you know, and we're doing this across all of our programs. So we manage roughly 35 electric programs across the state. Pretty much everybody that we're renewing, we're looking at 24 months right now uh, because of where the market is and sort of how things have played out for a lot of them with that third year. You get a nice, great, you know, lower price than uh, where you were, 
but at, at some point that has to give. Uh, something new that um, we wanted to bring up for uh, this program is the ability for somebody to opt in to renewable energy. So though the default would be the 4.58 cents um, for those who uh, were eligible and did not opt out, anybody who wanted to opt in to 100% renewable energy, they would have the opportunity to do that. Mm -hmm. And that would be at 4.93 cents. Uh, that is done through purchasing renewable energy credits, uh, typically at the national level, that's the cheapest. So uh, we've, we've worked with some communities that they want, you know, in state Ohio that uh, it either is not available or extremely expensive. But uh, the vehicle that's used to purchase and to offset the energy um, you know, still does make that investment into renewable energy. Um, at the 4.93, it is higher than AES Ohio's rates, but we do find that people who uh, opt into renewable energy, uh, they're not as price sensitive. You know, they're doing it for, for a different reason. Um, but I did check, and right now, if I went out to the Public Utilities Commission uh, website for the apples to apples, uh, there is not one 24-month product uh, with renewable energy that's lower than that. So it would give the residents uh, who wanted renewable energy a chance to opt in uh, at something lower than what's being offered in, in the market right now. Hmm. Uh, so again, things to, to consider. Um, though the uh, initial program did not you know, perform as well as we had, had hoped, I think you know we would you know, would all hope to consider that uh, it was unprecedented events that got us uh, you know for that last year. Uh, so we'd like to again bring to the table a, a shorter term and. Uh, and the option of renewable energy for those who would like to consider that, uh, you know, to add on top of uh, the other energy. And that's all I have. I'll take questions. All right. Thank you. Discussion. Go ahead. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, did a quick Google search. Didn't quite find information, but uh, where is Dynagy Energy Services based? So their their headquarters that is, is in Texas. Uh, they do have an office in Cincinnati. So they, they run all their Midwest stuff uh, out of Cincinnati. Great. Thank you. And so everything I'm seeing in the commodities market suggests a lot of tumult. What are you, what are you seeing? Yeah, and, and that's what we're seeing as well. Um, so that's where you kind of go back and forth on longer term versus short term because uh, the, the price of power is very cheap right now. Sure. So a part of you says, well, why not go out further? But when we look at this product, this is about trying to give a competitive and you know, fair and reasonable product compared mm -hmm. to the standard rates of the utility. So, you know, it's about trying to compete against that. So though, you know, if people wanted to go out and look, look for longer things, and that's a, a great thing about the current program and the next, there's no termination fees. Mm -hmm. So if people want to shop, if they want to go, you know, out longer because they don't want to kind of ride potential waves of, of the volatility, they can do that. And maybe I'm standing here two years from now when we're looking at a renewal and the prices go up. But it's all about trying to compete against what they would get if they did nothing and stayed with the utility. So yeah, we, we are seeing a lot more volatility in the market, sure. and that's why we're looking at at least locking things in for the uh, for next two years. Because the, the, the price surprised me. It was just lower than I, I would have thought. And just how and what are you seeing? Why do we see a lower price? Yeah, and I, ba like based on that chart, I mean, just the price of power itself is is very cheap right now. I mean, it, it's taken it's taken a big nosedive. There are other components of it uh, that that kind of shift things around, uh, but you know, they're not going to give it away for free. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, and yes, there you know can always go lower, but I th but I think it'd be very tough to see the the power pr part of, it, of the price go much lower than where it is now because we've we've not seen it this low in a long time and. Pretty much every community we're working with is renewing or seeing the lowest prices that they've ever locked in at. So out of curiosity, did you try uh, a three-year term? We did. And, and it's pretty comparable. Okay. Yep. Okay. But, but there's, I, I think one reason that we were chosen is to sort of look at things in the market. There is some unknowns mm -hmm. in the market that sure. far out. Uh, we do know some things for this year. We know a little bit of part of next year, but it's that third year that uh, we're a little bit in the dark on what typically we would know at this time of year. Um, so that's why, again, looking at the two versus the three, because if we're going to take some risk on a low price, we would prefer to do it over two years than to be completely blind on the third year. Sure. Thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Anyone else? I just want to say thank you for adding a renewable option. Yeah, we, we're finding uh, a lot of our communities are looking for that. You know, there, there are some that have decided to go 
100% renewable, but as you see, there, there is a cost associated with that. So we do like to give communities the, the ability to give people the chance to opt in for those that uh, you know, don't mind paying the premium uh, for other reasons. Mm -hmm. Your Honor? Yes. What's the percentage of uh, Beaver Creek residents that have decided to opt into our aggregation program? Your um, experience, please. Yeah, so I think previously it was, it was roughly 85%. 85? Yep, okay. early on. The people who had the ability to get in um, did take it. And one thing we've also seen, too, even though the prices uh, you know, weren't as competitive versus a yeses prices, uh, we didn't see a lot of churn. Um, we think a lot of reason for that is because of historically, even the 5015 is lower than, than prices have been historically uh, for this area. Right. So though it, isn't, it wasn't as good as it could have been, uh, if people stayed with a standard service offer, still lower than what they've historically paid. Um, so we didn't see a lot of, of churn of people you know, really sort of noticing and leaving. And if they decided, again, no termination fee. Yeah, I looked around and that 5.01 was really a good price, but this 4.6 is even better, so I like that a lot. And, and if I'll add a uh, couple things, you know, this, uh, the program currently expires at, at the meter reading in August, uh, so if uh, approved by council, that will begin the, the next meter reading. Um, aggregation has many, many, many uh, regulations and laws, and believe me, out the, uh, out the wazoo, and as Rich knows that there'll be uh, opt-out letters, multiple opt-out letters, just like when we started the program three years ago, and we'll update our website, and with the sample letter, it'll be a, a letter that comes uh, with our city logo on it. It'll be, um, you know, inform them of what they must do, either call a 1-800 number or send that form back in to opt out. Uh, there'll be instructions on if they want the renewable energy to opt in. So there's going to be a lot of questions come when those letters start hitting the mailbox, and we'll use social media and our website to uh, inform people. Uh, it was great to have that uh, website to point to. We had the sample forms and explaining everything. So a lot of people would call and we'd just point them there and they would read it and be educated uh, very quickly. So I <clears throat> just want to you know, let everybody know that you know, you'll get multiple, what is it, Rich, at least two opt-out letters? Two? Uh, no, so they'll get one. One, um, so, okay. so There's one. W one thing about changing suppliers, um, they get it there, there would be a second letter that would be sent out that typically would not. Because of the change in supplier, uh, again, if Donagy is selected, and th when Donagy picks up the account, uh, AES will send them a letter saying that Donagy is now their supplier compared to AEP. If we would have stayed with AEP, that letter would have not went out. And that's something that we actually consider, again, when we're running these programs, is, is you know, that, that letter. But the price that uh, Donagy offered uh, more than <laughs> made up and, and was, was better to sort of deal with that thing of having that extra letter uh, to save people a couple bucks a month because they, they were a couple of dollars a month more competitive than the next best mm. customer. Well, we'll try to do our best job to help educate though because the number one thing that happens and Rich sees it all the time in the communities that they go to, <clears throat> um, other companies uh, are watching what we're doing and they'll know what's happening and that's when the truckload of uh, van load of people get out with their clipboards yeah. and start hitting. Oh yeah, and uh, you're you're you know, and they try to start switching people uh, because and and that's why then a lot of people get confused on who is it and right. and what am I signing and and uh, just uh, we know we got hit hard three years ago, two years ago, <clears throat> when all this came out because people saw that as an advantage that people may have been. Uh, confused on who they had and what was going on. So there'll be more of that, and that's why we, we need to get a, uh, with Rich's help and, and Dynergy, uh, help to get the, the material and education out there so that we can uh, uh, kind of get ahead of the game with it. I will say that's already started. It's already right, been I'm in my neighborhood. So. It's always going You're on. saying that your, your uh, system was hacked, and so you need to do this and you need to sign up with them. So yeah, yeah it's, it's a mess. Just for clarity, the people that opted out in the, pre the current program, they will have to opt out again? They would, because um, with it being different suppliers, um, mm -hmm. and then you know, they, they may have not liked it the first time, they may want a chance the second time. 
Uh, I will work with AEP Energy um, just in case anybody calls and asks to be part of the permanent do, you know, do not aggregate list. I will get that from AEP and we'll we will transfer that list over okay. to Dynagy. So anybody who said, never talk to me, <laughs> yeah. you know, th th those, that's a different list than the people that just said, I don't want to be part of the current program. Okay. So we'll make sure to, to work with them to transfer that part over. And this is just residential service. Uh, uh, and small commercial. Small commercial. Yeah. So, so any small commercial, uh, again, who is eligible, uh, that uses less than 700,000 kWh oh. a year, which is a fair amount, um, would also be eligible. Mm -hmm. so, Do so they get switched automatically? They would get an opt-out letter just like the residential. Okay, so they get switched. And, and, and I guess why we can talk about that, because I had sent a letter not too long ago, you know, who's eligible? So, so those that are currently on the program, they're eligible. Those who are currently with AES Ohio standard service offer, they're eligible. Uh, people who are currently with other suppliers, they are not eligible. And the reason, they, they can call an opt-in, but they won't get an opt-out letter. And the reason is nobody knows the terms and conditions that they agree to. So if they just get pulled into the program, they may have a $100 termination fee with, you know, Acme Company. So that's why the, the state has set it up that those people, that, and I think that's one of the biggest confusions we have with these programs, so we've been much more uh, speaking up about that because everybody says, well, everybody will get a letter. Well, that's not true. Uh, those who are currently with another supplier will not get an opt-out letter. They would have to opt in. So it's only those who are on the program or currently taking AEP Ohio, AES Ohio's standard service offer that will actually get letters. Well, we need to make sure that the Chamber is aware of, of this program. As, I know mean, they're aware of it, but I don't know if they're aware of the detail because they're they are advertising currently a program of uh, offering some sort of chamber rate of some sort. So I don't, don't recall who it's through. But we ought to at least uh, communicate and make sure everybody's on the same page. Okay. Anything else? All right. Shall I hear a motion? Move to approve resolution 21-18. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve resolution 21-18. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same. Motion carries. Next is resolution 20. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Next is resolution 21-19. This is Resolution 21-19. It's a resolution by Beaver Creek City Council authorizing the city manager to enter into a first amendment to real estate purchase agreement with Diverse Ventures and Ohio General Partnership. You going to talk about that one at all, Pete? Uh, I, I can. Uh, just oh, just it, a brief overview. Yeah, just it, it uh, one of the parcels that we're looking to purchase um had a sign on it and therefore the uh owner uh entity wanted to make sure that that the sign was separated uh the picture is right there so in yellow uh we did a um survey of it and separated that piece uh which equates to point zero Zero, yeah, zero six of an acre. Um, you know, like I said, it's about under 34 feet wide, and that was so that we don't maintain that. That's part of the former uh, grocery store or whatever or that area uh, retail space. That's that sign for that, and we don't want anything to. We don't want to manage that or anything. So, uh, so that that's all that that this does is. Uh, um, Steve, any legalities you want to mention? No, no I think uh, you pretty well stated it. Uh, but yeah, this will this will allow us to carve off this particular piece of property. There are some restrictions that uh, the agreement refers to um, that will be put into. Uh, um, we got to think about whether we want to put it into this plat or we'll probably put in a deed, but uh, or into uh, restrictions because ultimately. Ultimately, if the land is the sign ceases, it will come back to the city. But um, the intent is to restrict the owner to using it, to allow them to use it for the, gro the former grocery store, that parcel, and and some of the businesses along there, but not not for just a general sign. 
That was the intent. Uh -huh. Any discussion? Do I hear a motion? Move to approve resolution 21-19. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve resolution 21-19. All in favor say aye. 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 As opposed, motion carries. Decision items. Acceptance of the uh, first quarter of 2021 financial summary. Good evening, sir. Good evening, uh, Mayor, members of uh, Council. I just want to do, you have my detailed report. I just wanted to go over a couple of key items here that um, showed up in the first quarter. Uh, property taxes, everybody knows that uh, that's the majority of our revenue. And uh, that revenue source is actually up about $400,000 from the past uh, uh, half year uh, last year. Uh, there's a lot of always a lot of confusion about the reappraisal, and 90% of that revenue is in a uh, fixed levy or a voted levy, and that reappraisal doesn't affect that. What we did get was a little bit of an increase for the uh, tornado damage that now are back on the rolls after being uh, rehabilitated, and also uh, new. Uh, construction. So again, new homes, new uh, nursing homes seems to be a big thing that came up uh, last year. And those type of things drive that uh, little increase that we got from the previous year. Uh, the reappraisal does affect the uh, general fund, the inside millage, and the uh, police pension fund. So again, those did go up correspondingly with the increase that the reappraisal did. So. But just wanted to let everybody know that basically 90% of the revenue that we get really had no effect on the, the reappraisal, that basically, in essence, their effective millage rate drops, and so they get a little bit of a break by uh, that reappraisal system. So I uh, just wanted to go over that real quick. A uh, couple of things with the uh, level of interest for the... Uh, continued revenue and expenditures for the uh, pandemic. Uh, the, uh, for, and the first good news is the uh, golf course, although they had a slow January and February, they had a record March. And uh, to date, uh, through March, they did about 1,800 rounds. Uh, that's compared to, uh, they did about 650 last year. So again, uh, record year. I was talking to Steve today, and he said that April has been uh, just as uh, sound there, too. So again, we're seeing a uptick in that. And again, when you have the uptick in the number of rounds, everything that corresponds with that uh, goes up to the cart fees, the merchandise sales, the driving range, all of that basically is up. Uh, and in particular, the uh, golf course, we're getting a lot of compliments about the uh, maintenance and how it looks out there. And uh, I think that equated to a couple more uh, season passes this year. We've already up to $65,000 in season passes, and uh, that's uh, last year we were down to like 24, and uh, we've already exceeded our budget in that particular line item. So I think that uh, folks are uh, making the commitment to join the, the club out there and to uh, utilize the golf course in, in the uh, excellent condition that it's in right now. Again, you remember that in the budget this year, uh, we bought about five or six pieces of equipment, uh, maintenance equipment that I think is that got delivered in March and that's starting to help out the process. A couple other uh, negative things though, um, obviously the uh, interest revenue, that's just basically non-existent. It went from 2.2 in 19 to 1% in 2020. Now it's uh, seven one hundredths of a percent. So uh, that does uh, still taking a beating. Uh, hotel motel tax, which is actually about the same as it was last uh, quarter, last year. Uh, that's a good sign. So we're starting to see uh, that pick up a little bit. Still about 30% lower than 19 when we had uh, uh, that run. But as things warm up and people are starting to travel more, we're hoping that that uh, starts gaining some momentum here too. Uh, fuel taxes, same type of thing. We're down about uh, 8, 10% on the fuel consumption taxes. Uh, again, summer's coming, uh, getting a little bit more expanded travel, so hopefully that will uh, kick in. What's helped us there was, you recall the uh, offset that we did. Uh, we uh, implemented the $5 uh, license fee to help support uh, uh, road infrastructure, so that 
kicked in this year, and it's actually offsetting some of the losses we're seeing on the consumption tax. So, but uh, it'd be nice to get those both in line there. Uh, the re recreation fund, obviously, uh, we all know about the senior center and the limited capacity. Uh, and what I understand is is that they did extend the memberships out six months from the point that they got them because the center was basically closed. So again, you're seeing some of that uh, annual membership revenue being down until people renew again once the center <laughs> opens up in uh, more earnest uh, capacity there. Uh, the one other uh, benefit was that uh, with the billion dollar buyback from the uh, Bureau of Workers' Comp, they basically allowed us to have a whole year without paying a premium. So that saved us about $200,000 also, so that was a good thing. And the last thing I'll re remind you of, which doesn't seem like it was a long time ago, but it, it, now that everybody's warming up and, and you don't really think about it anymore, is the uh, uh, snow and ice events. Uh, we had... 23 during the last season and we had about 14 the year before what that did was it took us almost to uh, what we normally budget for salt purchases which is about 6,000 tons I think we're at 5,900 uh, we have the barns got a couple of uh, thousand tons in it we might have to buy some more just because again you recall that the prices were actually lower uh, this year, they're dramatically. I mean, they were eighty-eight dollars, and now they're fifty-five or something like that. So we'll probably buy some more salt to fill up the barn for the upcoming uh, fall and winter season. But uh, just to let you know, we, we that we always budget for the average, and we've had the average this time. Last year was a kind of an exceptional year where this year we had a lot of ice events, which used a lot of salt. Uh, it wasn't a lot of snow in the beginning, but those ice events really uh, played havoc on us. Uh, and then besides that, everything else is uh, running good. <laughs> First quarter, every, you know, the expenditures historically are, uh, you know, below the 25% uh, measurement right now, the operating expenditures. So, again, the, the departments are doing a good job keeping track of uh, what they're spending money on. And, uh, and the revenues, other than the ones I mentioned, are, uh, you know, right at the uh, benchmark. So it's looking good. Well, thank you. Comments? Questions? Sir? Status of the, I, I understand you've got a statement in here about food and beverage, and I know that's been a no-no. What is the status of food and beverage reoperation? Perhaps uh, Council Member Bales or the manager? Or where, where are we on that? I'll let Mr. Donner up. Uh, good evening, uh, Council. Happy to be before you again this evening. Uh, Council Member Curran, um, right now the golf course has the ability to rent out our facility where the golf course provides uh, beverages, whether that's uh, soft drinks or alcoholic beverages, uh, and then our guests have the opportunity to cater into our facility. We are still operating under the state restrictions, which means we still do have reduced capacity as far as the number of people that can gather into our banquet facility. Uh, as far as our uh, grill room, that is open for golfers to be able to grab a hot dog or a pulled pork sandwich or uh, a drink and come and go out of our facility. That's uh, uh, back open and, and starting to operate again. Hmm. I don't know, I thought there was more conversation going on to try to bring back this thing by, by I was told in Rotary, they're going to start having meetings out here 1st of July. Now, is that goofy or uh, what? I can tell you that I had some conversation with Steve Click a week ago or so, and I know that he made Mr. Thonero and Mr. Landrum aware that Rotary is indeed wanting to meet back out there um, starting in July. They just have to get some of the details worked out. And I, and I think Steve has, uh, has a proposal he's working on to give to Rotary. The last I heard. Okay. I will say one other thing about the food and beverage in the grill room. Um, they are doing a fantastic job and I'm out there a couple days a week and there's a lot of people there uh, taking advantage of what limited food we have. Uh, one of the things that we had discussed was a survey that the bartenders would be handing out to people and that is not there yet. So I just I think that it's important that that gets there because there's a lot of people in there 
It'd be nice to know if they want more food. Very good. Thank you. I will say, because I was at the meeting Friday night at Rotary, that they are voting May 28th, whether it's going to be at Beaver Creek Golf Club or CCN. Mm -hmm. So just so you know. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? That's it. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. Uh, need a motion to accept. Uh, I move the acceptance of the first quarter 2021 financial summary. Second. I have a motion and a second to accept the financial summary. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same. Motion carries. All right, next we have a uh, board appointment to make. We have one vacancy on the Parks, Recreation, and Culture Board. And uh, so at this time, I'll entertain a motion to open nominations. Mayor, move to open nominations for the Park Board. Second. I have a motion and a second to open nominations for the Park Board appointment. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same. I'm now open for nominations. Mayor, I move to nominate Cecilia Bidiger. What was the name again? Cecilia. Cecilia. Mm -hmm. Bidiger. B I D I G A R E. Okay. Are there any other nominations? I move to close nominations for the Park Board. Second. I have a motion and a second to close nominations. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same. Motion carries. We have one opening and one uh, nominee. Do I have a motion to appoint? I move to appoint Cecilia Bidiger to the Park Board for a term ending 228 of 23. Second. I have a motion and a second to appoint Cecilia Bidiger to the Park Board term ending uh, February 28, 23. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same. Motion carries. Thank you. It is now council time. Councilmember Curran, would you like to start on the Yeah, thank you, Your side? Honor. Well, uh, uh, first, uh, as the manager's already uh, put on his notice here, big thank you to the citizens for an overpowering vote, in my opinion, for our street levy, and of course, most importantly, our schools, too. I was that was really a, that was a great great turnout mm -hmm. and uh, big thank you to them for that and I want to congratulate the mayor having his first uh, uh, activity over at the Holiday Inn nice turnout for that your honor and uh, I think people really enjoyed the uh, uh, the conversation uh, also uh, uh, the National Day of Prayer took place unfortunately mm -hmm. on the same night your event was so some of us had to go to both, but uh, there was a nice turnout for that, and uh, I was really, really glad to see uh, the number of citizens that participated in that. Thank you. Very good. Council Member Schwartz. I, too, want to thank the citizens for the overwhelming passage of the street levy. They make, make our jobs easy whenever we see those numbers, so very much appreciate that, and also very much appreciate the overwhelming support for the school levy. The schools are obviously one of the biggest draws to our community, and so they need all the support that they can get. Um, I attended the legislative breakfast with the Chamber of Commerce on Friday. It was a great event, um, lots of informative information. And then I also just want to take a second to recognize our police department and our law enforcement officers. This is Law Enforcement Memorial Week, and as Vice Mayor Adams so tremendously stated and I'm, I, I won't talk long because I will get choked up but those numbers are astounding and so please know that your service is not overlooked this community is very supportive in the city of Beaver Creek and we very much appreciate everything that you do and that your families do for this community thank you mayor council member Garcia Thank you. Yes, I'm going to just continue with what Councilmember Schwartz was saying about National Law Enforcement Appreciation Week. This, for those of you who don't know, this has been around since 1962, when JFK proclaimed this as um, proclaimed this as a national week to remember our law enforcement officers. And Vice Mayor Adams did say we've lost 119 officers in the past almost four and a half months now as we're coming into May. But more specifically, 
In 125 days, we've lost 119 officers plus three canines. And unfortunately, that number continues to grow every single day. And a very important one for me that I feel is necessary to talk about is Nashville officer Brian Sherman, who was shot and ambushed during a setup call for a 911 call. So our officers respond to 911 calls willingly to sacrifice themselves for others. And this officer in Nashville was ambushed and shot for a fake 911 call. It takes a special person with selfless characteristics to serve in law enforcement, especially during these times. Uh, law enforcement numbers across the nation have dropped, uh, recruitment has dropped, and we are just so blessed and fortunate to live in Beaver Creek where we have such a great community. I have been so honored to serve on city council under two great police chiefs now, Chief Fiorita being the second, and we are so grateful for what you do, and I can't thank you enough. So that's my soapbox for our, our law enforcement. Please do, um, it is so wonderful that every time you see them, they always have a smile and they're always saying hi to you. And I have no idea where they came from and no idea who they interacted with immediately before me. And it could have been horrific, and yet they still find a way to smile throughout the day. Uh, so thank you to our law enforcement, especially during this week. Uh, the one last thing I do want to mention is that I did attend another Miami Valley Regional Planning Commission meeting on May 6th. And at this meeting, which was wonderful, we forwarded the Greene County 35 uh, Valley Road and Trabine interchange project for consideration. So this project consists, consists of reconstruction of US 35. It's removing an at-grade intersection at 35 Valley Road and Trabine Road. And while this is not specifically in the city, this will benefit our city residents as the construction of a new interchange over 35 will improve safety and increase capacity. It's going to update about 1.28 miles of 35. Uh, MVRPC feels that this is an excellent project and the entire Miami Valley strongly supported this is completion. So again, this is something that I think is great for Greene County, great for the city of Beaver Creek, and we just have such great support within that organization. So that's just my update from MVRPC and thank you again to Chief Fiorita and all of our officers. Thank you. Council Member Dewar. Thank you, Mayor, and uh, thank you for your proclamation for the National Police Week. I echo the comments made. I'm very thankful to live in this community and to, uh, for all the work of Chief Fiorita and the whole police department. Thank you. Um, I'd like to thank everyone for voting uh, on Tuesday and for the uh, great turnout. I'm very thankful for the schools and the road levy, but it, it never escapes me. Um, that it's property tax money uh, from our from our residents, and so um, I always think about it and how to keep costs down. And uh, I take a look at um, uh, votes and and always take uh, every single vote into consideration. So thank you to everyone. I'd like to echo uh, Councilman Curran's statements on uh, thanking the mayor for his first Thursday event. It was a wonderful event, great food and great opportunity. And then to thank Kay Bond for putting together the National Day of Prayer. It was a wonderful event. Uh, thankful for all the prayers and um, pastors that spoke there, and for Judge Epley uh, as well. And finally, I had the opportunity to attend a, a book fair at Shore Elementary, which was then a, a larger celebration uh, for the kids, bounce houses, uh, food trucks, etc. And it was really a wonderful event. So thank you to everyone that put that on. So thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, Councilmember Bales. Thank you, Mayor. I'm going to repeat a couple, but there's no way I could say it as eloquently as Councilwoman Schwartz and Garcia, but uh, National Police Week, thank you for your service. Thank all of your team for their service. Um, uh, we have a fantastic law enforcement agency in Beaver Creek. I'm very proud of you, so thank you. Uh, also want to say thank you to uh, the constituents who passed the street levy. Um, fantastic response, just like Council Member Dewar said, and um, this really does uh, set the city up for success in the future with that uh, continuing uh, levy. A couple other things I thought I'd bring to your attention is I've been working uh, very closely with Owens Place, and they are in the middle of a construction of their... Uh, ultimate final project which is a, uh, a synthetic turf sports field and uh, it's starting to take shape now so if you drive through Rotary Park you'll see a lot of earth movement and um, I think we'll see some synthetic turf beginning of June and the project I'm hoping will be finished 
uh, or substantially finished by the time we celebrate July 4th in the park. So uh, that's really cool. Um, the last thing I'll mention is uh, about the golf course and, and, and Bill's report. Uh, the driving range has new uh, driving range mats that you can hit from and it has been so popular. I mean, people are out there um, all day and the nice thing is no matter what the weather, if it's really wet, you can still hit on them. And they're installing new driving range nets uh, this week to help uh, conserve some of those range balls that get down uh, towards the freeway and, and lost in the high weeds. So uh, I echo the comments. There's a lot of great improvements happening out there and um, just uh, proud to be a part of the city. Thanks. Right. Vice Mayor Adams. Well, again, uh, what I had written down here, pretty much everyone has said, uh, but that's okay. I mean, it all needed to be said. And uh, I've had the opportunity to work closely with the police department over a lot of years. And I know every one of those guys, people over there, the, the men and women that work there. And I don't think we could ask for a better group of people uh, that are over there. Uh, they really do. Uh, an outstanding job for our city. They care about what they do. Uh, they care about our citizens. Uh, they care about each other. Uh, and uh, I just uh, am very pleased that I'm able to, to live and work and, and be a part of this city. Uh, it's, uh, thank you very much for everything you guys do. I really appreciate it. Uh, I also would like to thank the Beaver Creek citizens for uh, supporting our levy. It was needed. Uh, I would uh, hate to think what would have happened had it not passed. Uh, and also uh, the schools. I mean, there were both uh, needed uh, additions to what we, we have. Uh, the National Day of Prayer, uh, I attended with Councilman uh, Curran and Dewar, and uh, it, was a, it, was a, it was a nice event. Uh, they had people praying for all of us from the, the national all the way down to the schools and the city, and uh, they did a great job with that. And I think that's about all I have. Thank you. Very good. And, uh, well, I've had a, you know, things are starting to pick back up. Uh, thing we still have to be cautious and we still have to be careful, but things out in the general public are picking up. I had the opportunity to attend the high school choir concert out at wow. Tenutter Center. And it was uh, quite different when you see all these young people with their chairs six feet apart. But, and uh, we were isolated in certain little pockets of the Nutter Center, but it still came off. It's that first step, that initial step to get back to having things live. Uh, same way we had the legislative breakfast that some, uh, many of us attended. And uh, uh, so things are starting to get back. Uh, the, uh, I do want to issue a thank you to the uh, county, Green County Commissioners. They put up a sizable chunk of money for this, uh, to move this project forward, this interchange on 35. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was quite, quite a sizable little chunk of money to, uh, to provide the local funds. So we appreciate that when uh, the county recognizes the importance of a project, uh, even though it's not in the city, it does benefit our city greatly. Uh, I also had the pleasure of uh, doing a, uh, and don't ask me how I did it, but it would last about a half hour. At the 445th, out at, uh, oh. they had a uh, seminar, that, or not a seminar, but a uh, educational program they were doing out there to, and uh, that they do three-day uh, event. And, uh, and they asked me to accommodate them on a half hour's worth, and so I did, and uh, we got through it. But again, just another example of how things are starting to get back. Uh, uh, there were precautions taken, but it was still, a few months ago, it would have still been a virtual event. And uh, so I'm just eager to see us get even further along the road. Uh, I do, I'm, I'm, I know it's been said by everybody here, but, uh, and I've expressed it already at the, uh, on social media, but, uh, but uh, I too want to just say thanks to the, to the electorate for recognizing the importance of these two levies, uh, the city school, the city uh, road levy and the uh, school levy, both of them extremely important to the well-being of our community. And we are, we are just that, a community. We're not separate school district. We are separate, but we're not. Uh, so the township, the city, the school system, 
we, uh, if one hurts, we all hurt. And so I'm real happy that the result of the election. And with that, I'm going to move it right on to the city manager. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, yes, I just echo uh, the thanks for the street levy. Um, and uh, thanks to our police department again. We do have an outstanding uh, police department uh, and the officers do care. That's, uh, they're very personable and uh, they do care. That's, uh, it's not just a job to them. Um, moving on, uh, speaking of trying to get back to normal a little bit, Memorial Day ceremony uh, at the end of the month, Monday, May 31st, last day of May. Community will gather together in honor of men and women who died serving in the U.S. military. The ceremony will begin at 2 p.m. at Veterans Memorial Park, which is on North Fairfield Road there. Uh, limited bleacher seating is available and lawn chairs welcome. There, you know, there's room to spread out uh, to a degree. So if those that haven't been vaccinated or even if they've been vaccinated and still want to separate, you know, bring your own lawn chair, you can sit away and uh, still uh, enjoy uh, the festivities. There will be, uh, I think there's still going to be a speaker, more to come on uh, the speaker and the band. And, and, and so more to come, watch that. We'll publish that on uh, Facebook as it uh, becomes available. And uh, 4th of July, uh, again, getting back to some sense of normalcy uh, that this is going on. What we're wanting to have, this went out uh, to the press, and I think it been making its way uh, around the uh, press corps on different TV channels and uh, in newspaper. Uh, but, uh, you know, this is put on through uh, the, not just the parade and the fireworks, but that's uh, entirely made possible thanks to generous donors. Uh, so we are still seeking donors uh, to help fund the 4th of July uh, activities and fireworks. So if you're interested in becoming a sponsor, please contact the park superintendent Kim Farrell at 937-427-5514 or by email uh, at farrell at beavercreekohio.gov. No donation or sponsorship is uh, too little, too small. Some give $150, $100, $500, you know, bigger companies and corporations. And there's a uh, donor, if you go to our website uh, under parks and look for uh, 4th of July, uh, there's a gold, silver, and all that, and your company can get its advertisements put on all the banners and all, all the advertisement as, uh, sponsor, as a sponsor of the event. So we do try to give back as we're advertising. Uh, and, you know, be thinking right now, too, it's not too early, be thinking about uh, joining a 4th of July parade. Uh, there will be an application for parades. We'll start promoting that uh, in a little bit, but as groups are gathering back together, they may want to... Uh, uh, think about that as well. And that's all I have for tonight. Well, thank you. Thank you. All right, next on the agenda is citizen comments. If there's anyone here this evening that would like to address council on any issue, please come up. And we ask that you uh, try to keep your comments to about three minutes. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Cheryl Turner. Um, Mr. Mayor, council, my fellow, um, fellow citizens, I'd like to share a story with you and then give thanks. Um, March 30th, 2021, uh, Troy police officers were going on their policy and doing their jobs to protect their citizens. However, a girl of light that I had the privilege to work with lost her life as a suspect was fleeing the police, hitting her at over 100 miles an hour. By the grace of God, her baby survived. This hurt me and touched my heart so deeply, being a mother for myself, and all the other Beaver Creek families that go about their business in the mornings taking their young children to daycare on their way to work. So I thought, I must do something. I must be her voice and be a light like she was and do some good. So I reached out to our police department in this beautiful city where I live first to talk to our police officers and hope to work with them to change our policy. What happened was I had the luxury of speaking with the most humble man, Captain Molner. Um, I didn't have to have a policy changed because our beautiful, wonderful police department had already done that. They have already thought about that situation for our citizens and keeping us safe. Um, he took the time to explain to me our policy, emailed me a copy of our policy. Just knowing that they've taken the time, our whole police department, 
and protecting the citizens of this community makes me so proud. I hope that our police department can be a beacon of hope and guidance to other police departments in our, our local surrounding communities. Our Beaver Creek Police um, mission, mission statement is as follows. We of the Beaver Creek Police Department are committed to work in partnership with our community to safeguard life and property while answering the rights of all people and thereby enhancing the quality of life for our citizens. Nothing could make me be more prouder than being a citizen of this community and having the honor of our police officers keeping my children safe. Um, my uncle is the um, originator and creator of um, at Be Hope Church Celebrate uh, Recovery, so he's I donated. He's a small token to the affection of our police officers, but I can't say how much enough that it means to me that I didn't have to have uh, to sit down and talk because they'd already thought about keeping us, our citizens, safe. And I, again, I really hope that they can be a beacon of light and, and, and a good example to the other agencies because the police officers in Troy, they weren't doing anything wrong. Um, they were so saddened by the events that took place that they, they had no way of knowing what a radical thought was taking place in that young man when he decided to tell his girlfriend that was in the car with him that if he was going out, everyone was going out with him. So again, I am grateful to our police department. I'm honored to be part of the Beaver Creek community. And I hope that our citizens know how lucky we are to have the police that we do. Thank you so much for your time. Thank, Thank you. you. You're so welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. And it, uh, you know, our police department is superior in a lot of different ways, too, just besides the issue you're talking about. And so that uh, we are quite proud of our police department right. as well. So the more we can all spread the word, the better off we'll be. So thank you. Anyone else? Seeing none, we will move on. And we do need an executive session this evening. Do I hear a motion? Mr. Mayor, I move to enter into executive session pursuant to section 121.22 of the Ohio Revised Code for the purpose of consideration of the purchase of property for public purposes. Second. I have a motion and a second to enter into executive session. May we have a roll call, please? Council Member Curran? Yes. Council Member Durr? Yes. Council Member Garcia? Yes. Council Member Schwartz? Yes. Vice Mayor Adams? Yes. Council Member Bales? Yes. Mayor Stone? Yes. And ladies and gentlemen, there will not be any decision coming out of the executive session, so there will be no further action by council this evening. Thank you very much. Other than